Again, if you have a lightning talk, please stay there with your laptop ready. All the people that was trying to sign last night after the social event to be first in the list, I throw that to the garbage and I put a new one this morning at 8. Okay. You ready? Yes. Nice. Okay. So, wait, 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 wait. Go. Okay, welcome everybody. Today I'm Volodymyr Piskun and I'm going to talk about professional vulnerability of software engineers. Yeah, good. Controls work. So I want to start with a question. What is the ability every developer has? To answer it, let's take a look into what is developer learning loop. When you implement something, you begin with learning new things. Then you implement and receive knowledge to the code base. And then you're very likely to have some obstacles. It is not pretty general, though. It depends on your experience and the complexity of the issue. But we all know it. And you repeat it over and over until we die. No, until we solve it. And there is something which is always there when we are struggling with the problems, and it is frustration. While solving a problem, we really frustrate a lot. And while you are growing as a developer, you develop your skills of dealing with frustration. And while we grow, this frustration, which is big and takes all of you, becomes something like this, small tiny thing in background, when you're just so focused that you don't really notice that you're frustrated. And you, with this, you're really getting better at ignoring your own emotions, which is leading to different problems as procrastination or anxiety or even sleeping issues. That could be something else. And one small thing I want to share with you during this lightning talk is that you should never forget to listen to yourself. And for, for this, you could use different te techniques like journaling, or you can just stop for a second and ask yourself, how do you feel from one to five? And how do you feel now, guys? Thank you. Enjoy the weekend. It was a pleasure. Okay, second one, Marika, Masia, Lisa. and Lisa from Ukraine, and they're going to share some things. Hello, everyone. We are a small team of junior Python developers from Ukraine, and we are very glad to be here. We have just started our career in software development. My name is Lisa, this is Masha and Marika. To start with, we want to uh, thank uh, thanks all countries that support Ukraine, especially Ireland that opened the country uh, for 40,000 Ukrainian refugees, continue to help Ukraine uh, in humanitarian aspects using every opportunity. This is incredible, and we are really grateful for that. Thank you. Uh, how can I? Sorry. I want to share with you my own story about uh, how the war came in my life. On this slide, on the left side, you can see my neighbor's uh, house that I see every day from window in European city. Yeah. On the right side, you can see something, I don't know how it's naming, uh, that was founded on the yard, uh, in the yard of uh, my parents' house uh, near Hostomel. <laughs> so, and uh, unfortunately, 
every Ukrainian now have similar story about his uh, parents, his friends, or his own story. Mm. For today, there's no single uh, Ukrainian that was not affected by the war. It's pity. We want to ask you to afford help to help Ukraine. Here you can see a volunteer organizations that we support and we ask you to, to help. Uh, the first organization uh, is based um, on the church I attend. Uh, we are engage, uh, engaged in evacuation of people from uh, dangerous places and humanitarian aid uh, delivery to hospitals, towns and cities that are in ring or have just been liberated by uh, armed uh, for forces of Ukraine that helps with most urgent needs such as the reconstruction of houses of people who suffered. The second is a shelter for animals that takes abundant or injured animals from the areas affected by the warfare. Financially, there is no small help. Any sum is appreciated. Uh, and what else you can do for us? Please don't fear to hire Ukrainians, especially young developers as, uh, like us. We are really happy to have a job. Most of us started uh, our uh, career at the beginning of the war. But many people in Ukraine are not as lucky. Uh, it's too hard to find a job in, in Ukraine at the moment. Uh, so please donate, uh, help Ukrainians and help junior developers especially women. Um, uh, we are really needed. Thank you. Uh, we are open uh, for any questions. You can find us somewhere here in the hall uh, after talks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Sebastian is the next one. What's the name of your talk? Fuck it. I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> the, the red one. The red one? I don't have a... Have you told the dongle word? Yeah, but put here. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> Give me one second. Yeah, the projector is not happy with the name of your talk. I thought this one was better. Okay, we're easy with you, bro. Yes, uh, go. go. All right, hello guys. So I'm gonna teach you, oh, one second. Uh, I'm gonna teach you how to fix production code in five minutes. Um, so first, let's start a little bit with who I am. I'm a Franco-Mexican uh, Python developer. I mean, I develop in Python, I don't develop Python. Uh, I'm, uh, luckily, I'm a number lead data engineer, I'm a pew pew lover, obviously, and uh, I've been attending EuroPython since 2019. So, a little disclaimer here, if you use this at your job, you might not have a job for a very long time. <laughs> okay. What the f <laughs> All right, this is what it is. Um, so don't you hate it when, you know, you push some code to production, you don't test it, because why would you ever do that? And uh, there are some errors that come up and the, t the code doesn't work. Today I'm going to teach you how to fix all that. I'm introducing Fuckit. Fuckit is uh, an official uh, Python library. You can just pip install Fuckit. And then whenever you have a function that fails, uh, you just use the Fuckit decorator and it doesn't fail anymore. <laughs> Isn't that great? This is good, this is good. Oh wow, okay. Um, so this, uh, this package obviously is not developed by me, it's developed by uh, AJ Alt, so you know, you should clap for him, not for me. Please go ahead. And, uh, and as was written in the official GitHub, but you can't see because it didn't load, uh, this module is like violence. If uh, it doesn't work, you're just not applying enough of it. So you can just chain fuck it calls and uh, make stuff that still breaks, not break anymore. Let's see some examples. Um, so if you have a bunch of code and you don't know which part of it is failing, but some of it is failing, you can just uh, use the fuck it context manager and uh, all of your failing code will work. 
And if you have a module and the module is broken, you can just import the module with fuck it and the module no longer breaks. <laughs> so yeah, next time uh, your PM, your PO, your CTO, or anyone comes to you and says uh, production is fucked, fuck it. <laughs> 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 So before I knew what this talk was going to be about, I asked my CTO if he would approve the talk. He said, okay. <laughs> Please don't fire me. Thank you, guys. So the PyCon Portugal, while, so, come here. Oh, you have slides. Okay, no, wait, then. next. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> If anyone wants to announce a conference, there is a one minute thing that we can do uh, in the middle. This, this. We just like to make your life harder. <laughs> yes, after this. Ready? Oh, okay. And yeah. the, this, mm -hmm. the, uh. Okay. Five minutes. Okay. Hi. Uh, I'm Takadori. I'm, uh, today, I, my talk title is Spread the Community After COVID-19 in Japan. Before main topic, did you enjoy your Python? Yeah. yeah. I know. I really enjoyed the Euro Python with good people and nice beer and nice beer and nice beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Takanori Suzuki. Uh, please call me Takanori because Suzuki is a famous, uh, famous family name in Japan. I'm from Tokyo, Japan. Tokyo is far from Europe. I have a question. Do you know Japan? Right hand. Oh, almost. Uh, have you been in Japan? Oh, 30 percent? Uh, do you know PyCon Japan? Oh, 10 but 20 but. Uh, have you attended PyCon Japan? One, two, three. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I'm vice chairperson of PyCon JP Association. We launched the PyCon JP in 2011. At that time, the Python community in Japan was so small. The first PyCon JP had about 150 participants. Now PyCon JP has grown to 1,000 participants over. <laughs> yes. In this year, PyCon JP will be held as an in-person event. Please come to Japan. Have a beer with me. <laughs> Apart from PyCon JP event, we also work to spread Python in Japan. One is Python Bootcamp, tutorial events for beginners all over Japan. We have held 44 camps with about 800 participants. By the way, I introduced it at the European Poster Session in 2019. Does anyone remember me? Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Another one is Pi Ladies Caravan. The event connects local women's communities across Japan. However, as you all know, COVID-19 has changed the world. We are no longer able to organize in-person events. But we must not stop our activities spread Python. We have started two new activities. The first is PyCon JPTV. We stream YouTube Live every month. We talk about Python news, conference overview, and Python new features and something. It's selfie time. I will present EuroPython at the next PyCon JPTV. I'd like to take pictures with you all and share it on YouTube Live and Twitter. Are you okay? Whiskey. Whiskey. <laughs> Whiskey. 
<laughs> nice. Okay. Thank you. I I will share. I will be share. Okay. Are? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Another one is Python Charity Talks. We wondered if there was a way to combine our splitting Python in Japan and with donation, donating to the PSF. It is a, uh, the Python Charity Talks is a, the event. It is a half day online event with all participation and the sponsorship fees donated to the PSF. We held three events and donated 25,000 US dollar over. So huge. <laughs> yes. Thank you. In recognition of these activities, board members of PyCon JP Association, including me, won the PSF Community Service Award. Oh, yeah. It was a great pleasure for us. Please check this. Finally, I'm, say, I'm sorry, but I have no to say goodbye. Because I'm not ha ha heading to, I'm now heading to Denmark. Because the Lego house and Lego land are waiting for me. Super excited. <laughs> Thank you. See you again at PyCon JP anywhere. Thank you. Duke? No, no, you, you, you connect your laptop. Yeah, yeah, and she's going to announce that uh, we are trying to stream things. Yeah, perfect cooperation. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Do you want to borrow a Sorry, like someone just said that I can do a one, one minute uh, live stream talk, so I'm just going to announce, uh, announce a uh, conference that is called Pajamas Conf. So pajamas, like the, one, the thing you wear when you go to sleep, and then Conf, C-O-N-F, you can Google it online, I have no slides. Um, so if you Google it, you will still, still see our website from uh, last year uh, that is actually, uh, you know, we haven't worked on it yet for this year because uh, people who are involved in Pajamas Conf, most of them are still working for EuroPython, so we have no time to do anything. But uh, I will start working on it probably next month, hopefully. Um, so uh, please uh, search for us again next month and maybe CF, uh, CFP will be open. The only thing I'm sure is, is that the, uh, that conference is going to be online, so you don't have to wake up super you know, tired and go to the conference venue because there's no venue and also you don't have to worry about no space to take a nap because you can take a nap in your bed. So um, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Duke. That was exactly one minute. Uh, we don't know drinking Guinness. We are like senior Guinness drinkers by now. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, I'm not professional. But go for it. I know my stuff. Okay. Hello, I'm Melan Lesnek. I'm from Kibicom. I'm software over engineer. And I want to start with the beginning, the, with the story. I have to come here like a first from the Kiwicom, and I have to wait for them for six hours. So like every normal person, I waited in a pub. And right down, I came there, ordered Guinness, and start checking it. We are from Czech Republic, so Czech style, top down. And the bartender just stopped me. It was the hell on in the pub. It was extreme. He just went for me like, I, I am mental. What are you doing? Did your mama drop you on the head? And then he told me something like, when he calmed down, that you shouldn't drink a Guinness immediately. And the problem, problem is that the Guinness is a nitrogen enhanced beer, which is delivered in the glass, which is property with the drug. As you can see, the bubbles are dragged by the glass, and the current is in the middle of the glass. So the problematic part is that the glass contains much more air, and the beer is not that tasteful from the beginning. So, we concluded a lot of research, don't worry, it's going to get better, I promise. Also, my pride in the pub, the guy is ugly on me, and I'm from Czech Republic, and our consumption is 135 liters per person in the year, including infants and elderly. <laughs> and I fuck up drinking beer, so research, <laughs> every day we are here, we are researching the best, what we can do about Guinness drinking, what is the best average time of having to start to drink, how to look the best foam and everything. Also, we created this beautiful draft about bartender clink intent and Guinness taste. 
on the average, it's enough to just wait 10 seconds and the DNS is completely fine. Sometimes it happens that we have to wait 20 seconds, but it's the worst pop, and you can find out by the price of the DNS that the DNS is like nine euros. So, the, yeah, bartender does not care, take care anymore in like nine seconds because he has much more work than just take care of you. The solution, we wanted to trade machine learning application like every other to check out the foam, thickness, color, the average price quality of this Guinness, how much you have to wait, and everything like that. So for this purpose, we already prepared a roadmap about research preparation, which happened on the Tuesday because I was here alone, so it wasn't proper research. When my colleagues came, and they are awesome, everyone helped. Every one of them helped a lot. <laughs> evening research, it was awesome. Another evening research. Another evening research will happen today. It is planned on the roadmap. And we are searching for the investors today on this <laughs> presentation. On the Saturday, we are going to research more. Sunday also, Monday also. And on Tuesday, we have to return back. And unfortunately, in the Czech Republic, we don't have a good DNS. So, call for investors. Current total DNS cost was 488 euros. <laughs> and we are going to need approximately 1,000 euros and boards of aspirants. I think 1,000 is enough if we wanted to have six beers, everyone, I think. Yeah, yeah. 1,000 euros, it's fine. And for the investment, you are going to get a whole company, whole research, everything, I promise. So contact me on my business opportunity social medias. You can choose any one of them. I, all, I use all of them, except the Tivicom email. And let's see. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sounds like a really interesting uh, company to invest in. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. It was a li little bit product placement. I know it's not. It's prohibited. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. You can, it's, it's legal in Dublin. Yeah, thank you. How <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oops. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Okay. Hi everyone. I'm Amar, and I'm going to talk about ML. So, who here likes ML? Yeah, a couple of people. So probably in the last couple of weeks, you've seen something like this. This is called Dali Mini. It's an online tool that you can write anything, such as llamas visiting Dublin. And you will create uh, images. So these are fully generated. And now you might be wondering, like, weren't you going to talk about machine learning? Uh, and the answer is no, I'm not going to talk about machine learning. It's Friday. I'm going to talk about memes and llamas. <laughs> and maybe a bit of machine learning as well, uh, just to make this didactic. So this is a Pikachu that looks like a pug. These are llamas participating in a hackathon in Dublin. This is Iron Man, but it's a llama. And now you might be saying this is prob probably magic. So what if I told you this is not magic? So right now I'm going to tell you a new kind of model architecture called diffusion models in an elevator pitch. And at the right, you can see some llamas having a rave in an elevator as well. So. You say Voldemort and a llama taking a selfie. There is Voldemort, there is the llama, and the selfie. So what's going on? So you have the picture, right? Uh, and pretty much uh, these diffusion models, what they do is that they add noise. So they are destroying the picture until you have just a bunch of noise. And then they will try to recreate the original image from the noise. OK, a lot of text. So you say something, Voldemort and a llama taking a selfie. And then you can use a model called Clip. Uh, so like Clippy, to create uh, something called the image encoding. And it sounds really fancy, but it's just a bunch of numbers, so an array of numbers that has a semantic representation or a representation of uh, the, uh, the text. And then using diffusion models, you will uh, convert that to the uh, last image at the right. So that's pretty much what diffusion models do. And that's how you can create a sketch of a conspiracy theory that llamas built the pyramids in Egypt. <laughs> Darth Vader, Mowing the Lawn. Among us, but the source is a llama. 
llamas in the matrix, and llamas and minios attending a Python conference. So thanks, everyone. This demo is open source. Uh, it's uh, free. Anyone can go on the web and try it out. And we're having a hackathon for the next week, uh, and you can join. Uh, yeah, thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. So Christian is next. While Christian is connecting the laptop, PyCon UK is going to do a short announcement. You, you can use this one, so work with me here. <laughs> Hello, you're a Python. After two years, uh, PyCon UK is returning to Cardiff in Wales from Friday the 16th till Sunday the 18th of September. Ticket sales are open. Hope to see you there. Thank you very much. Thank you. So happy to see all the conference. Okay. There is a few lightning talks that we don't have the speaker, so if you're not here, we are skipping you. <laughs> and yes, looks like you have a mirror. Come on. Yeah, there. there. Yeah. Perfect. Do it. Ah, great. Cool. Uh, yeah, it is, it is uh, fun, funny how some Python conferences try to uh, kind of crystallize around a certain topic. And this year, I think it was uh, very much, uh, what, what, there was a lot of talk about um, uh, st uh, <clears throat> uh, st uh, statically uh, checking your code and uh, for, for formatting your, your, your code and also uh, about type checking. And uh, John Carmack said, uh, who doesn't know who John Carmack is? Hey, show of hands. Who doesn't know what Quake and Doom is? OK, uh, John Carmack and um, John Romero actually are the guys behind Quake and, and, and Doom. Well, that's, that's for context. Um, the most important thing I have done as a program in recent years is to aggressively pursue static code anal analysis, even more valuable and the hundreds of serious bugs I have prevented with it is a change in mindset about the way <coughs> I view software reliability and code quality. And I think, coming from uh, John, John Carmack, well, he, he talks about C and C++, uh, C++ code there. Uh, but I think the same is applicable to, to, to Python. And yeah, if John Carmack says that, I, it's good enough for me. Um, yeah, anyway, I, I, hold, I held a talk about uh, around this uh, also, and I just wanted to say my slides up on the, uh, yeah, this URL, and uh, yeah, and I linked uh, on, on and I have a whole link list uh, to, uh, yeah, to, to uh, refer to the tools I only could, yeah, uh, I could not really address it in, in, in my talk. Um, so, I, uh, I, uh, while I'm standing here, I want to have, say a, a big, great thank you of the organizers of this PyCon. Uh, we came to think about you like, uh, like our angels in, 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 ye in yellow. So, thanks a lot, guys. You were brilliant. <laughs> And I like to have, do another uh, uh, shout out, and that is to all of you guys, to the for, to the Python community. You were are so warm and welcoming, and it you made it for, uh, for such a great conference. So we came for the language, but we stayed for the community. So so, so uh, sad that we have to say goodbye. But oh, that is the wrong meme. We'll be back in, 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 in autumn to, to, Pi, uh, to Pi Corcon Island in, in Dublin. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, so we have an announcement here. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Parminder. Um, I just want to reiterate the last speaker's uh, comments about EuroPython and how it's been so warm and welcoming. This is my first conference. 
Um, just a quick announcement, there will be a social event happening tonight um, at about half past seven, and there's a small group going out for drinks and dinner, so if you'd like to join us, please meet us outside the convention centre at around 7.30. All right, thank you. Hope to see you there. Thank you. Ready? After trying for two days, you have a lightning talk. Finally. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Konstantin. Uh, you call me Kostya. Uh, and I'm going to talk about interviews, tech interviews to be specific. And this is another talk of like five hours, squished to five minutes, so fasten your bills, please. Sorry. Um, and originally the talk was for interviewers, but I mean, if you're a candidate, it's kind of silly not to listen to advices to interviewers, so I decided to cover kind of both. Uh, but first of first, kind of disclaimer. So um, I'm quite a pianite, and um, I'm doing a lot of interviews in Kiwi, and Kiwi is large. Uh, we have 200 Pythonistas or so, and if you're going to apply, it's likely that I'm going to be um, one of your tech interviewers. But other people have other opinions, and I try to convince them. But they try to convince me, and this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this now, so you can approach me and convince me back. And, but anyway, I'm doing this talk to convince you too, and uh, I, th I think it's going to work. So uh, what's the problem with interviews? Basically, you have only a few minutes, a few hours, maybe a few days to figure out whatever the person is okay, and you can work with them, and you're going to be happy uh, working with them. But how can you do that? Then it's pretty unrealistic, I would say. So what are shortcuts that people are taking? So sometimes they just assume that if you follow for all of the newest Python uh, change log uh, changes, then you're going to know things. But I doubt it. Like, there are people who are just follow the same Twitter accounts and memes, and I mean, it just doesn't work in the end. It doesn't show that they actually know something or can do the work. And the other thing is when sometimes have, people have a lot of questions that are impenetrable, like you can't pass these interviews, and this is somehow a goal of the interview, and well, it doesn't work as well. Of course, if a candidate is smart, they, well, they will laugh at you, and if they're really smart, they will find a question that you don't know about, and they will like, okay, uh, so I know what you're doing. So what we are thinking about usually on the interviews, and technically it's universal advice that you can uh, do with anyone who are uh, anxious or in a nervous situation, make sure they understand what's going on. Be transparent about what's, wh who you are, uh, what's the structure of interview, what's uh, going to happen, and be clear about everything, and be transparent with uh, issues that may, they might have during the work, and etc. So uh, our structure of the technical interviews is like this. So first there is a uh, kind of soft part where there is some conversation which is going on, and we want to just figure out what, was, what are the interests, what the person is uh, having in their mind at the moment. And during the technical interview, uh, we have so first kind of a quiz, then we ask to share an opinion, and finally, we do some difficult task. So the quiz is just a five minutes to just clearly verify that person actually talks, uh, talks truth. Because, I mean, if you ask questions on the interviews, sometimes a person can do this, like Google the answer uh, with their phone under, this, uh, under the camera. And like with the quiz, you can't usually do that. It's just fast. Uh, but it's, not, it's kind of a ping-pong question. should be really un simple to answer, but not too hard. Like, uh, don't go too deep. It should be fun. Uh, then the opinions part, well, it's about to figure out if the person can learn. So, like, people have different opinions. Some people have uh, opinions that are not much yours. But we want, what we want to learn from this, what we want to figure out, is how people came to this, what they have learned, to get with this opinion. But and in general, unfortunately, or happily, interviewers have to know a lot of things. Uh, so I kind of feel like this in this regard. So I, I can't really help you here. You need to know things to uh, actually test whatever candidate knows 
uh, technically what they should know. But uh, there are a few uh, tips we can give. So first, if it's a challenge, uh, we, uh, for junior, you better know the task really well and be able to help the junior really well. So everything goes smooth then. Uh, with the senior, well, it's better if you don't know the task. And in this case, we kind of work together, and this feels like uh, the majority. <laughs> Thank you. Just in time. <laughs> okay, uh, so the next one, um, while you connect your computer, PyCon APAC, it's going to do a short announcement. Hello, folks. My name is Iqbal. I've been sent over by our compatriots from uh, in Taiwan to send you a very special and a very important message. I hope I'm successful in my mission. Is to invite you uh, to PyCon APEC, which is going to be done online on September 3 and 4. Um, there are two important things that we are trying to do with uh, within PyCon APEC. Uh, number one is uh, a young inspirers. Uh, session where school children from middle school to high school will present their projects. And number two is uh, sprint talks uh, on this new platform called uh, Gather Town. So I hope you can look online for PyCon APEC, September 3, September 4, uh, waiting to see you folks join us there. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the name of this dining talk is Trump's Twitter tirade. Yes. Hey everyone, I'm uh, Peter from a small startup in Hungary called uh, Vizu, and I thought to share a story with you about uh, a former president of the United States who I assume is very popular in this round, uh, specifically about his uh, tweeting habits. So uh, he started tweeting in, in May 2009, and actually in the first couple of years he wasn't such a big user of the platform, so basically his top month is like 36 tweets, Whereas in the years afterwards, he got hooked on quite well. Uh, and then he got uh, to be a uh, nominee for becoming the president. As you can see, the closer the election day comes, the, the more they took away his phone, it seems. So it has a downward trend. And uh, then he won that election and became the president. And there are these you know, bubbles of, of growing number of tweets over there. So these are almost all the tweets. I have to admit, these are only for uh, May 2020. Uh, and you know, so six months is missing before he was kicked out of the platform. Um, and yeah, so, yeah, sorry. So uh, we're gonna have a glitch now and it's gonna come back in a second. Until then. Yeah, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be okay, just one second. Uh, not so much, but um, yeah, here we are, All right, and let's get back. Okay, so the interesting thing is like these were the number of tweets, and this is the number of times these tweets were shared. So you can say no one really cared about the guy before he became a serious nominee and then when he became president. We call this graphic the Trump Twitter trumpet. Wow, thanks. <laughs> okay, so the number of tweets for now. Uh, there are obviously three types of tweets, original tweets, retweets, and replies. And if you check the trends, there are some interesting things here. So in the bottom, you can see the replies. That's a function he kind of forget of after he became president. Whereas there is a huge number of retweets uh, towards the, the end of this period. So basically this huge growth in the number of tweets comes mainly from just retweeting things. And obviously, he wasn't the only one using the account. So he put in the minimal effort, let's just say, uh, to get there. It's even more apparent if you see the share of the tweets among time. And then uh, another aspect you can take a look at is like what tool he used to send these tweets. Uh, first, in the first period, he was uh, overwhelmingly using the web interface and then he switched to his favorite Android phone, and then when he became president, he was banned from it because of security reasons, so he uh, chose, uh, well, he had to use the iPhone exclusively, as you can see. 
Uh, if we take a look at the number of uh, tweets uh, in total sent from these platforms, you can see the, uh, the iPhone is ahead by far. Uh, just another aspect you can take a look at, uh, at this data set is the time of day uh, Trump sent these tweets. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's like a 24-hour clock we see here. AM is on the right, PM is on the left. And uh, yeah, as you can see, there are these famous tweet trends in the morning, early morning hours, so like 78, between uh, 2.15 and 2.30 in the morning. Uh, and uh, if we filter the results uh, the, based on the periods that we see in the beginning, so when Trump was still a businessman, he was using uh, the web platform throughout the day, and there were these tweet trends uh, mostly from, uh, from his Android phone, like you know, typing in the middle of the night, when he got angry, when he saw something on Fox News or, God forbid, CNN. And uh, when he became president, these, these uh, early morning and, and night sessions uh, became less uh, apparent. And actually, if you check the peak, so when he was a businessman, let me just go back, the peak is around the afternoon, so, sometimes, so around here, it's uh, like uh, four in the, in the afternoon. Whereas when he became president, the, the peak went to the early morning hours, so around 9 a.m. So that was the story that I wanted to share, but there's a catch here, because actually all I used here is a Jupyter Notebook uh, to, to do all this. This is like 400 lines of uh, Python code within a notebook. Uh, I put this story together uh, during the conference. And you can do that, too, by visiting ipyvisu.com. There are two open source packages, ipyvisu and ipyvisu story, with which you can build animated data stories yourself. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Just, OK. Can I take a quick picture with the audience? Yes. OK, thank you. I will disconnect your laptop. Yeah. So last lightning talk of today are our friends for the Django Comporto um, PyCon Portugal. Yeah, you're welcome. Hi, we didn't. We Sorry, didn't just. Uh, 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 <laughs> so, this is the last one. Please don't leave, stay. We have the closing session after this. So, we didn't use the um, one minute uh, uh, opportunity because we wanted to share with you what uh, all of you will be missing if you don't come to Porto this uh, September. We are hosting DjangoCon Europe and uh, the very first PyCon uh, Portugal. Um, we hope to share with, uh, with all of you our beers. I don't know if they are better or not, but uh, they, are, they are good enough. Uh, <laughs> and they are cheaper. Uh, Portugal is a country that is not that expensive, so even if you have already come to uh, EuroPython, you, you probably still have budget for uh, PyCon Portugal. Uh, and uh, to leave you with, uh, with something, uh, you can all apply for uh, free tickets in this QR, QR code. Hope to see you in Portugal. Thank you. That looks promising. <laughs> Uh, okay, that was the last one. In a few minutes, we are going to do the closing session, and then we can all go and cry in the ferryman. See you in a minute.